Okay, let's talk a little bit about being a creditor. So, in order to facilitate commerce, we've created fictions. We call them corporations, we call them persons, we call them nations, we call them states, counties, cities, all matter of vessels. And through our creation of these fictional vessels, we facilitate modern commerce. And in commerce, you always have a debtor and a creditor in any transaction. Now, that role can shift from moment to moment. If I provide consideration in a contract and you have yet to perform, what does that make me? What does that make you? Creditor, debtor, until you've performed. And let's say your performance, by the nature of the contract, affects some performance or some condition by which now I must perform. For instance, uh, I, I love the example of going out to a restaurant, right? So we walk in, we sit down, the waiter or server is now under obligation to take your order, bring you beverages, bring you food. But once they've achieved the obligations and provided their consideration, it's now up to you to provide consideration. In some form or another, you can maybe wash dishes. The, the server won't be happy with that. But if you provide cold, hard Federal Reserve notes and tip at least 20%, they'll be happy. Okay. Um, with these fictions we've created, and fictions always exist on the timeline, right? Past, future. They don't exist in the now. Fictions are, by their very nature, dead. They don't exist in the now. They have no living essence behind them. So if they are fictions, and we are the driving force moving fictions in commerce, and by moving I mean literally giving them the commercial energy that it requires for fictions to conduct transactions, what's that make us in a creditor-debtor relationship? The creditor? Fictions are always the debtor. See, the beauty of the system we've created is that the corporations are always going to be subject to your authority. They exist by virtue of you. You granted them into existence. You granted this government into existence. So in a creditor-debtor relationship, if we realize that the fictions can never make a claim, so what care I of the United States coming after me? Well, the United States is a fiction. What care I if IBM come after me? IBM is a fiction. I can inflict or affect control over any fiction in any moment. I don't need a public record to do it. Public records are useful in the form of recorded liens and things like that, but I can create a contract by which the fiction can never perform, thereby creating a breach, thereby creating a lien right, thereby creating creditor-debtor relationship whereby I am in control of the fiction. And that is possible in any moment with any fiction. The fictions are not controlling you. If you put your authority in the gods of money, in the gods of government, and you believe man's law to be the absolute authority, well then you've granted and conveyed that. You've granted that authority. You're in agreement. You've granted that to them.
by choice. Ooh, interesting little, here, here I go, I'm going to talk about some uh, foreign policy. So this may be interpreted as, you know, I support coups and, and the destruction of nations and the people therein. Anyone familiar with Chavez in Venezuela? Is he a good guy or a bad guy? Very good. You're learning. That would be a judgment. So, let's look at, anybody ever heard of or seen any materials by, I forget, economic hitman guy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're familiar with the processes of the economic hitman. How they would exert their control through the banking system to take over nations. Does anyone know what happened in Venezuela when they tried that? It didn't work. Why is that? Was it because of him or was it because of the people of Venezuela? The people of Venezuela were too conscious to be tricked by their media, by their corporations. They realized they were the ultimate authority. They had determined that Chavez was the guy they wanted. What was so evil about him? Oh, he wanted to take the money that they were making off of oil and everything and give it back to the people. That's pretty evil. Especially if your God is corporatism. If that's your belief system, corporatism, that's bad. Even if your belief system is capitalism, that's a bad thing. Give the people control of their resources? Oh. But the economic hitmen have had success doing it in many other nations. The Shah of Iran in the 1950s, or our, our implant of the Shah of Iran, we got rid of, what was his name? Mc, 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 I want to say Melchizedek, but that's not it. It's, uh, I forget his name, the democratically elected president of Iran. What was he going to do? He was going to do the same thing Chavez did. Nationalize the resources of the country. And the people, by their debtor nature, fell for the trick. Who's responsible? Can we blame the bankers for what happened in Iran? Can we blame Kermit Roosevelt? Can we blame the CIA, the MI6? Can we blame the United States for what happened in Iran? You can? You can. Okay. But who ultimately is responsible for what happened in Iran? The people of Iran. Because in reality, Kermit Roosevelt ain't that powerful. One man, give me a break. So, I think there's a contradiction in fighting for peace. Yes. And I think often we take the, you guys have heard the quote by, or the parable, whatever you want to call it, of uh, the anti-war protesters approaching Mother Teresa to march against war. And she said, uh, no. <laughs> because law of polarity, you're creating a fight you're putting your focus and attention on war, you're manifesting the war. She said, I'll tell you what, you come back to me when you're marching for peace, and I'll do it. And I'm not going to march against war, conflict. So look at where we do that in life, where we take a stand, which we believe is a righteous one, right? We're always the righteous one. Who here is always the bad guy? No one? Okay, so who here is, who here is always the virtuous, righteous one? Right? You're always the one doing it right. You're always the one, you know, taking the higher road, right? Or at least by your experience. So, we have currently underway what has been loosely termed globalization. 